What's up everyone, my name is Edward Lee. I'm a filmmaker and photographer. Welcome back to the channel. Now, I've shown a lot of my home office and my desk setup, but I live in a home here with my wife and I wanna share some tips on how you can optimize your home setting and your living spaces. So let's get right into it. to mention that this video is sponsored by Castlery, but a little more on that later. So the first step in creating a productive living space is to declutter. Now, when we first were kind of trying to figure out what we want to do with the home, it was kind of messy. It wasn't painted. The floors were a little bit of a mess. And honestly, there was just boxes and stuff just everywhere. And so before we started filling it with a bunch of furniture, we put the bullet on some of the bigger things, like we got our floors refinished, we painted the inside of the house, and we just started with a blank canvas. Keep in mind, this is obviously a costly thing to start out with if you wanna kind of start fr with a fresh canvas, but things that aren't quite fitting the design aesthetic that you want, I highly recommend that you just toss it. I know it's hard and we have attachment to things, especially if we grew up with them, but this was something that me and my wife really had to do, you know, moving here, having a lot of things that we accumulated over time. We just had to get rid of everything. And this was a really great way to start fresh. Now, the next step in creating a productive living space is identifying where your natural light sources are. So behind me, you see there's a window. There's a few other places in the downstairs area that have windows. This is something I've talked about a lot in my kind of home office videos or desk setups, but there's a lot of studies that have been done with employees on how sitting by a window or having natural light when they're working has affected their productivity. It really improves their circadian rhythm, just vitamin D, being able to focus better. And when you're just stuck with fluorescent lights or you, you're constantly working or trying to focus in an area that doesn't have natural light, it can hinder your productivity. Now, most homes, apartments, anywhere you live, there's usually one, at least one or two big windows near the living area. So whether that's kitchen, living rooms, etc. And so the point of this tip is to just identify where those windows are and then start designing your spaces around that natural lighting. The third step is to figure out your color scheme. Now, I'm not a professional interior designer. I didn't go to school for it or anything like that. But my wife, Christine, is honestly really talented at this kind of stuff. She also didn't go to school for it, but she loves interior design and home decor. It's a passion that we both kind of share. You know, find the inspiration from where you will, but color scheme is kind of the base of everything. You need to figure out what you wanna have in terms of the vibe and the mood for your living spaces. Now, for me personally, as you know, in my home office, I have a gray wall. I have a lot of darker accessories, black hardware. It's a bit moodier, definitely, in my home office. But around the living spaces, when me and my wife were building it out, we really wanted to have more of a bright and airy feel, you know? So we stuck with some wood tones, um, some topes, and a lot of plants to make you feel lively. And then we repainted the inside of the house all white and we refinished the floors with kind of a matte finish, a lighter matte finish. And so you don't have to go this route for your setup, but you do want to lock in what textures, what hardware, what paint color you wanna have all before you start filling it with a bunch of furniture. Because when you have the color scheme locked in, it's a lot easier to figure out what hardware and what furniture and all these pieces that you wanna have in your living space. Don't mind my dog, Harlow is just chilling. Harlow's just chilling being a guard dog on the sofa. Harlow. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, this video is sponsored by Castlery and they were kind enough to send me out some furniture so that Christine and I can furnish our some of our living spaces around our home. And I personally really love Castlery furniture. I'm a big fan. This is the first time I have seen some of their furniture in person and the unboxing experience was super easy. The furniture is very, very simple to put together, which, you know, from other places that you order online or you buy, sometimes the assembly process can be kind of a nightmare. It's a big reason why I don't like buying new furniture or just new items around the house just because the assembly process is just so time consuming. But with Castlery, it was packaged all really nicely. A lot of the stuff already came 
pretty much pre-built so you just take it out of the box and you set it up especially like the boucle chairs and whatnot and even the the sideboard you see behind me which is one of my favorite pieces all the wood tones match really nicely and the pictures you see online are very accurate representations of what you can expect when they arrive to your home another thing i love about castlery is they're a modern furniture brand so they're very up to date with a lot of the modern trends that you're starting to see on social media or just an in interior design in general they're really up to date on that kind of stuff so you never have to worry about about buying a piece of furniture that looks dated or makes your home look old. So I really am a big fan of a lot of their design choices. And also they're not just designed well, but the furniture itself is also really high quality. So some of the pieces you're seeing in this video were sent to me by Cassery. So like the boucle chairs, the boucle sofa, the sideboard, the dining table and the dining room uh, chairs are all by Cassery. And I really appreciate them working with me on this video. So thank you again, Cassery, for sponsoring this video. Christine and I have decided to use the furniture to kind of block off each section, almost to create these imaginary walls to separate the spaces. So for example, like this living room behind me, instead of setting up the couch against the wall and having the boucle chairs on towards the window and having it just you know, open up into the entryway or into the dining room, we decided to set it up so that the couch is against the window, the boucle chairs are facing the couch, so it creates almost like this box, right? It creates this environment that feels like if you wanna come here and hang out and just be in a living space, that's what it's for. So the tip here is when you're furnishing your areas, don't just make everything feel like one big open room. It's actually really nice to have separate spaces that are blocked off, with furniture the way you configure it because it just makes the spaces feel more intentional and when you come downstairs or you come into your living areas you'll be in a certain mood and you'll be like okay actually i want to be here today or i want to be here or i want to be here instead of thinking that it all feels the same right you don't want all of the spaces in your house to feel the same it wants to serve a different purpose for each little corner of your home the last tip I have for making a productive living space is make sure you design your space with sharing in mind. What do I mean by that? Well, every space should be livable. You know, you don't want the home office, for example, or your desk setup, that's really for you. You know, you, you spend the most time there, you work there, and typically it's just you being there. But one thing that I've realized really contributes to my own productivity is when I switch it up and work with more people around me. I think this is why a lot of people like to sometimes work at coffee shops because maybe it's the accountability, maybe it's the, the ambient sounds, or maybe it's just the energy of being around other people. It can really contribute to your productivity. And so every living space that Christine and I have kind of designed together in this area, we've designed in a way where we want to welcome more people to interact with us in these spaces. Even though we're very grateful to have our own home offices here in this house, I can't tell you how many times we're just on this couch together working on our laptops and I've gotten some of the most work done in those sessions. This house was quite literally, no joke, empty for like a year and a half, the first like year and a half of our marriage, just because we we're getting our feet settled, you know, starting a life, you know, saving up money to do adult things and refinished floors and painting can get really costly. So one mindset tip I would share with each and every one of you is just take your time. You know, when you move into a space, I feel like a lot of people just rush into buying a bunch of stuff and filling it. Even if, if it's with furniture or things that they don't necessarily love, that's not how me and Christine wanted to build our home. You know, it's okay to take your time. Everything I'm showing you in this video, honestly, is just a kind of a one and a half to two year process that it took us to, you know, intentionally design each parts of our home. And it's not even done yet. There's so many parts of this kitchen and living room that we have yet to design. There's still a lot of home decor that Christine wants to put up and around on the walls and whatnot. But I wanna bring you on this journey and share this process with you. If you're still watching to this very last bit and you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the subscribe button and I would love to hear from you in the comment section and hopefully I can make some more videos to bring you around to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.